Hey everybody, it's Mr. N here, and uh, we've got our next lesson, and this is this is on separation of variables. Now, <clears throat> we've done stuff kind of similar to this before, but let me explain what is going to happen with this one. So, <clears throat> recall that we uh, talked about a derivative, and we talked about an integral. So, if we had f of x, oops, let's uh, put this in here. If we had f of x and I took the derivative of f of x, we said, okay, we're just going to call that little f of x. And then if I took the integral of little f of x, well, then this comes out to be this capital f of x, obviously plus a c, right? Whenever we take the integral, we have plus c. Well, what is the derivative? We said the derivative was y prime, and we also said it's dy over dx. So if I take this dy over dx and I integrate dy over dx, remember all of this is from the fundamental theorem of calculus, I would end up with my original equation, my f of x equation, whatever that is, plus some sort of constant. So the other day, what we did was we did slope fields. And I said, you're going to graph this dy dx for all the values that it could possibly be. And we put this, and we saw the patterns and the grid and what it could look like. Then I said, well, Suppose we had the one that looked like a parabola. I said, well, you don't know exactly where the parabola, if you had a slope field that kind of went like this. And we said, well, you don't know exactly, and suppose we, I'll just put an axis here real quick. And then suppose we had that as our slope field. I said, well, you don't know exactly where the parabola could be. It could be up here. It could be down here. It could be anywhere because we don't know the constant. Well, what we're going to do today is we're going to separate the variables, integrate, and if I have an initial condition, I'll be able to find that constant and then come up with the exact equation. So this is called separation of variables, and a separable equation, and let me use the pointer tool, a separable equation is a first-order differential equation which the expression for dy dx can be factored as a function of x times a function of y. So we're going to write this dy dx in some sort of uh, f of x form. But in order for us to do that, we have to separate the x's and the y's and then integrate. Now, if it just has x in it, like we did over here, this was no problem. But this time you're going to have x and y. Remember how we did implicit differentiation? You had to do the x's, you have to do the y's. Well, this is kind of similar in that sense. So we want to put all the y's together, all the x's together. So in this situation, I put the f of y back on this side, the d dx on this side, and then I integrate each side, right, as I'm showing right here. I integrate each side, and then I can come up with the equation. So let's do one for practice and see how this works out. Now, some of these are super simple, and some of them can get quite complex. It's just in the solving that gets complex. But the concept itself shouldn't be too bad for you. So let's try this first one. All right, in order for me to integrate, I can't just integrate right here, right, and, and get a y equals because I have an x and a y on this side. So I can't do that. So what I want to do, let me erase this. So what I want to do is I want to separate the variables out. So I will go ahead and do that by cross multiplying. In this case, I have y dy equals x dx. So what I did is I collected all the y's on one side, collected all the x's on the other side. Now, typically, we collect the y's on the left side, so that's just get used to that. All right, so now at this point, I want to integrate each of these. So I'm going to integrate this side, and I'm going to integrate that side. And let's see what we end up with. So I'll have the integral of y dy equals the integral of x dx. So I integrate this with respect to y, obviously. I will get 1 half y squared equals, I integrate this side, I will get 1 half x squared. Now, I have to put a plus c somewhere. You don't want to put it on both sides because it's a constant. We just want one constant. We don't need two constants out of this. So just put it on one side. Typically, I'm just going to, you'll see me putting it on the right side. So now, I want to isolate y. So I'm going to multiply everything by 2. So y squared equals 
x squared plus 2c, and then take the square root, so y equals plus or minus the square root of x squared plus 2c. Now, you'll see some books simplifying this, and instead of two times a constant, you'll see them, and they will just write this as one specific constant. So we can go ahead and do that, and you can say like y equals plus or minus the square root of x squared plus k, say, as our constant. You could keep it as another c. That's okay. It's okay to do that. So let's move on to number two. So again, I separated the variables. I integrated. I have my c, and then you just, at the end, just put it as one separate constant. All right, over here. Now we take a look at this, and I have y prime on this side. What's y prime? It's dy dx, and then I have a y squared sine x. So on this one, we're going to go ahead and rewrite this y prime as dy dx, and we get y squared sine x. And the reason I did that is because I want to be able to separate the dy and the dx so I can integrate this. I want to put all the y's on one side, all the x's on the other side. So over here, I get dy over y squared equals sine x dx. Sine x, let me put the x there, dx. And now I want to integrate. So I have the integral of dy over y squared equals the integral of sine x dx. On the left side, remember, this is y to the negative 2. So I end up with y to the negative 1, or negative y, I should say, to the negative 1, equals, I integrate this, I will get cosine, negative cosine x plus my constant. At this point, you can solve it. So I will just rewrite this as 1 over y so with a negative equals negative cosine x plus c. So over here, I end up with, if I take the negative to both sides, I end up with 1 over y equals a cosine x minus c. And then I'll have y equals, and I can flip-flop this, 1 over cosine x minus c. Now, again, if you wanted to put this as any constant, you could say y equals 1 over cosine x plus k, and obviously k will be a negative value. Okay? All right, let's move on to this last one. Now I have an initial condition, and that's what I was talking about before. You can end up with an initial condition here to be able to solve for what that constant's going to be. All right, so over here, find the solution of the differential equation that satisfies the initial condition. All right, we have our dy dx. I want to separate this out. So 1 plus y squared dy equals uh, y cosine x dx. And then I want to bring this y over. So divide everything by y. So I'll have 1 over y plus y dy equals cosine x dx. At this point, I want to go ahead and integrate each side. So I will take the integral here and the integral there. So this one, you could think of it as the integral of 1 over y dy plus the integral of y dy, right? Because that's how we can integrate that. And on this side, it's cosine x dx. So in case you didn't see that you can integrate this, this is just like saying x squared plus 2x, and you integrate that. So just in case you didn't see that. All right, so back to what we're doing over here. This one becomes ln absolute value of y plus, this is 1 half y squared. On this side, I will get sine x plus c. Okay, at this point, you could say, oh, I got to solve for y. But that's going to be very, very, very difficult. So don't, because you won't be able to. But you know an in initial condition. When x is 0, y is 1. So let's go ahead and put that in there and see what happens. Again, when I, I said from our initial condition right here, when x is 0, y is 1. So let's see what happens. I'll get ln 1 plus 1 half of 1 squared equals sine of 0 plus c. Let's finish the problem up over here. Um, I will end up with ln of 1 is 0. Here, I'll just write them down here so you can see. This is 0. This becomes 1 half. Sine of 0 is 0 plus c. So I'll end up with c equaling 1 half. All right, 
So since c equals 1 half, I could plug that back in, and I will get ln absolute value of y plus 1 half y squared equals sine x plus 1 half. And we will leave this like this. Um, this. This one is too difficult to explicitly solve for y, so you're just going to have to leave it like this. You can't put y by itself in this one. If you take a look, there's no way to isolate it. So that's the basics of separation of variables. This is just a quick, brief lesson on it. I'm going to do more examples in another video tomorrow, but hopefully this is enough to get you started, to get you uh, working on these. And then uh, check back, and I'll have a second video on this. So thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button, guys. Let's, let's get my subscriber count up. So uh, appreciate you guys watching these videos. All right. Good luck.